Morning, guys. Everything new under the sun. I want to take a look at uh, um, Revelation 16, verses 8 and 9, and we're going to talk about some climate change things, some stuff going on in the weather, and uh, how does this all relate to end-time Bible prophecy? Well, we're going to pull it together and have a look, and uh, it's going to be my opinion on what I think um, God could be using in the last days. And uh, so the fourth bowl of judgments... And this is related to a men being scorched. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl upon the sun, and power was given him, given to him to scorch men <clears throat> with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. So what happened here? Um, so uh, God <clears throat> allows the sun to get very hot. Power was given to it. And, uh, and it scorched men on earth uh, with fire. So it was so hot, they are apparently burned with fire. Scorched with a great heat, it says. And what did they do? They didn't uh, repent. They didn't ask God, for, uh, ask God to relent. They didn't ask God to cool the sun down, um, or whatever they would call upon God to do in that case. What did they do? They just blasphemed the name of, the God, of God even more. <clears throat> and so I think this is indicative of the hard-headedness uh, of um, the people in these last days. They are just so against God. Um, they are not willing to repent. They are not willing to, willing to recognize Him as Creator God. And I think this is going to be played out with um, natural phenomenon. I mean, you take that verse literally, and it said um, uh, God um, gave a power to the sun to scorch men with fire. So He's using His natural creation to bring about judgment on mankind. Let's take a look at a few articles and we'll see what they say here. So there's some interesting stuff going on with uh, with the climate. Um, and all around the earth, things are hot, things are cold. This is latest news from the economic collapse uh, blog.com. Climate collapse, wind chill temperatures will hit minus 60 in the Midwest this week as global weather patterns shift. <clears throat> and I suggest to you that uh, weather uh, patterns are going up and down, and um, much less a product of uh, man's uh, influence and more of uh, natural cycles. And we'll take a look at the sunspot cycle and the uh, solar maximum, solar minimum cycle. Um, and much more due to that, and much more uh, due to God um, controlling um, and upholding and uh, uh, keeping the processes going um, as it relates to the earth. The experts are telling us that the Midwest could experience the coldest weather it has seen ever seen this week. Windchill temperatures of minus 40, minus 50 will be common throughout the region. Um, and some spots will actually get hit with uh, windchill temperatures of minus 60. It says a shift in the polar vortex is being blamed for this life-threatening weather, weather. And we are being told to expect the coldest temperatures to arrive Tuesday night and Wednesday morning. <clears throat> so this is a situation happening in the U.S. right now. The coldest weather in years will put millions of people and animals throughout the Midwestern United States at risk of hypothermia and frostbite to occur in minutes during the final days of January. The deep freeze continued across the upper Midwest on Sunday, with temperatures plummeting below zero in the morning, the low uh, of 45 below zero um, Fahrenheit in International Falls. Minnesota shattered the day's record of 36 below zero Fahrenheit uh, from 1966. So extreme cold temperatures, wintry blasts in uh, the U.S. Um, take a look at this one, though. This is uh, your hedge. As Mideast freeze, uh, Mideast, as Midwest freezes, rather, the United States, <clears throat> Australia, uh, has record uh, heat wave, while Midwest uh, America hunkers down for the coldest temperatures in a generation. Temperature records have also tumbled across South uh, Australia, with the city of Adelaide experiencing um, the hottest day on record. <clears throat> Records of temper uh, have tumbled, not temperatures. Life-threatening cold is sweeping across Chicago. Meanwhile, in Australia, Adelaide hit 46.6 degrees Celsius, the hottest temperature recording in any Australian state capital city since records began. 80 years ago, sending ho uh, homelessness shelters into cold red and sparking fears of another mass fish die-off. So all around the world you have some record cold temperatures, you have some record hot temperatures. 
This is not all due to man-made climate change. This is simply cycles of the Earth um, that the Earth is going through and increasing <clears throat> birth pains and, uh, and also affected directly, I believe, um, by um, the, the solar situation, solar minimum, solar maximum, um, sunspots on the sun, which are um, greatly affecting the Earth. I would suggest to you that um, this is uh, even not a, a significant event in relation to the 6,000 years of the history of the Earth. We've been recording for 100 years, 150 years, whatever, and this is the hottest we've seen in, uh, you know, according to Adelaide, 80 years, um, but that's not a long time. And so we have no idea what happened apparently in Adelaide 120 years ago, 150 years ago. It may have been, may have gotten hotter than that, um, that long ago. We have no idea. And so they're calling this, you know, record temperatures, but that doesn't mean anything in the grand scheme of things. Um, that, that could be just fully within range of regular fluctuations um, if you had a history of, say, 200 years uh, of measurements. And we simply don't have that. So to make assumptions about what this is, is just bad science, I would submit. <clears throat> Let's go on, though. Amidst global warming hysteria, NASA scientists now expect global cooling. So this is interesting. NASA is now coming out and saying global cooling. Those promoting CO2 as a reason for global warming are hucksters, and those taken by in by hucksters, the article writer says. Um, we are seeing a cooling trend, says uh, Martin um, Malinzak of NASA's Langley Research. High above Earth's surface, near the edge of space, our atmosphere is losing heat energy. If the current trend continues, it could soon get, it could soon set a space age record for cold. So now NASA is coming out and no longer uh, suggesting that the heat is, the, the world is heating up. Um, in fact, it's cooling down. The new data is coming from NASA's sounding atmospheric using broadband emission radi uh, radiometry or SABRE instrument, which is on board space agencies, thermosphere, ionosphere, mesosphere, energetics, and dynamics satellite. That's a, a lot of words there. SABRE monitors infrared uh, radiation from carbon dioxide and nitric acid, two substances that play a vital role in energy output in, of our thermosphere. It says, the thermosphere always cools off during solar minimum. It's one of the most important ways the solar cycle affects our planet. <clears throat> so uh, excellent that uh, NASA, uh, you know, is saying straight up that the uh, solar min, solar max directly affect the temperature of our planet. So it says, if all of this seems as if NASA is contradicting itself, you're right. It's sort of. It says, after all, NASA also reported last week that Arctic ice was at its lo sixth lowest level since measuring began. And when, again, when did measuring begin? <clears throat> Not too long ago. And so when you measure that up against 6,000 years of the history of the Earth, let alone the millions of years that uh, NASA actually believes, they really have no idea whether it's the sixth uh, lowest in, in the history of the planet by any stretch. They're not, they're not suggesting that. But it makes you think that um, um, the ice cap is, uh, there's a lot less ice there than there was. Um, it wasn't long ago, 4,000 years ago, there was no ice cap because that's when the flood of Noah occurred. There was no ice cap. The earth was uniformly warm and there was no ice cap. There was no Arctic. Um, it was temperate all around, tropical temperatures all around the earth with the, with the uh, ice canopy prior to the flood of Noah. <clears throat> so these guys really have no idea what's happening. They have no understanding of the actual scientifically uh, accurate history of the, earl, of the world, of the earth, and of uh, the age of the earth. It says... All of this uh, proves. It, all this proves is that we have at best cursory understanding of Earth's incredibly complex climate system. That's true. So when mainstream media and carbon credit salesman Al Gore breathlessly warn you that we might do something about climate change, it's all right to step back, take a breath, and realize that we don't have the knowledge, skill, or resources to uh, to have much effect on Earth's climate. Yes, there's nothing we can do that would. Um, overpower the sun's effects, and if the <clears throat> God chooses for the sun uh, to do something to the climate, he can do it. And that's exactly what he will do in Revelation 16. 
He's going to give power to the sun to overwhelm whatever man does in relation to climate change. Whatever man is trying to do to, to cool the planet, God's going to overwhelm that by giving power to the sun to scorch men. And what do they do when that happens? They blaspheme him even more. Now I want to go look at... Here's a, here's a chart of sunspots, and you can see the solar maximum, solar minimums, the sunspot number. You can see it going up and down. Unfortunately, we don't have really good charts of kind of projecting into the future. But you can see that it goes, it goes up sometimes, and it goes down sometimes. When it goes up, you get heating in the Earth, and uh, generally warmer temperatures when the uh, solar minimum comes at the, uh, um, in the valleys of, of, these, uh, of this chart. And that's when you get uh, cooling. Look at the modern minimum on the left-hand side. During that period, uh, it was a mini ice age. That's what the history records tell us. It was like a mini ice age. They had they went for years um, during that period when there were no effectively no summers, and you know it continued to snow, and so they had mini ice age during that time. And this is just a regular natural natural process. So why would we suspect that we wouldn't get another modern minimum and create another ice age? Um, let's take, take a look at this one. This is one I found on Google Images. And it, if you look at the bottom of the purple chart there, it kind of gives a readout to the year 2020. And you notice that the, the very last one, you notice declining sunspot activity, so it, it's almost like we're heading towards a modern minimum. Uh, but we're heading towards a, a, a valley um, ending up, we're st it's going to start turning around in the year 20. 21, I would submit to you, which I believe ends up being about the start of the seven-year tribulation, and then it'll probably go uh, start going back up again once we hit minima. You can look at you can look at the minimum there, the very last peak there, and then go back to about um, the year 1900, where similar uh, levels are, and you notice that in 1900 the peaks then start rising again um, to maximum, and you can see the maximum in 1960. So I would suggest to you that. Um, that it would we would be heading towards a solar maximum in the year 2028. So if uh, the Lord <clears throat> does decide to give power to the sun, it's interesting that it would be um, coinciding with solar maximum as well uh, during 2028, during uh, maybe the wrath of God, and maybe even before that. You know, we have no idea how fast uh, it can turn around. Um, and especially if God supernaturally gives power to the sun, well, then it can easily at any time uh, scorch men with fire. And so let's read this one more time. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl. This is wrath of God coming upon the sinful and evil men on the earth. And power was given to him, to the sun, uh, to scorch men with fire. And the men were scorched with great heat. This is one of the plagues, one of the uh, punishments upon the evil men of the earth that are existing at this time. And they blasphemed the name of God who has the power over these plagues. They did not repent. They did not turn back. They did not say, sorry, God. They did not recognize his power. Or maybe they did recognize his power, um, but it didn't cause them to turn around and repent, to say, sorry, God, you know, relent. It uh, just caused them to blaspheme and to, and to, to swear God and to call him names and to uh, turn away and uh, run away from him even more instead of giving him the glory. That's the thing. They don't want him to be God. It's not that they don't believe in God. It's that they don't want him to be their God and they blaspheme him, blaspheme him, and they don't want to give him glory, and so they get the punishment and the judgment due them. But interesting situation with the solar minimum, solar maximum. I see it building up to a time of God's wrath uh, coming in the, the latter half of the seven year tribulation and extending through um, the year 2028 as, and when the, the Lord returns and sets his feet upon the Mount of Olives and, and great earthquakes happen. And this is all end-time Bible prophecy, so it looks to me, <clears throat> honestly, when you look at these charts, that the sun is going to synchronize with God's plans for end-time Bible prophecy exactly, perfectly, as uh, the Lord uh, has designed, I believe. Um, you know, it wouldn't make sense that the, seven year, the, half, uh, the last half of the seven-year tribulation uh, was the solar minimum. It wouldn't make sense. Uh, God could still use that. Maybe that would be an even, even more supernatural uh, showing of his power, uh, but it, it's interesting, I think, that God plans these things and he uses his natural earth um, to provide uh, the judgment uh, that he is calling upon the world. He uses his natural, he uses natural things, the sun and the earth and earthquakes.
And uh, that's shown time and time again in the Bible. The first destruction was with water. The earth, uh, the flood around the earth. He didn't uh, supernaturally rain down uh, fire and hailstone. He does, he does do that sometimes. But generally for the big events, he simply uses his creation that he created um, to bring about the judgment um, that he has for, for mankind and the evil on the planet. And I think that's what we see coming. So I thought I would uh, provide uh, that to you. Let me know what you guys think about that. I think it's pretty fascinating stuff uh, that the earth and the sun is synchronized with, <clears throat> uh, with the timing of uh, God's judgment, as I understand it, at least at this point. Um, so interesting things. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll leave it there, and I will see you guys in the next video.